So it's so critical that we work together constantly. And our Duncan franchisees, I think about the ones sitting around the room here, they really are the inspiration for who we are. They're small business owners, many of them were immigrants, first immigrants, second generation immigrants, and they represent the, the American dream just like all of you. One of the things I wanted to do, I talked to Tim about, and he said, hey, talk about the transformation that you're going on today. And it's a 70 year old brand, you know, steeped in a lot of history. Why change? And look, you guys all read the same newspapers that we read. You've seen iconic brands. It seems like almost every day a new big box is closing. Iconic brands like Sears closing. Well known, well respected brands, Toys R Us, Payless Shoe Stores just closed. Um, you know, Radio Shack, you can go on and on and on. There are, the world is changing. We did a study about two or three years ago. And in that study it said, in today's world of changing customer demands, brands and companies that don't change will face a 3% innovation penalty. And so what that means is, no matter what you do, if you're a great brand, if in 2018 you delivered a $1 of sales and you did everything exactly the same, in 2019 your sales would be 97 cents. That's how quickly everything is changing in the world. Victor mentioned it, technology, right? <coughs> Customer choice, changing needs, the Amazon effect. Everything is changing rapidly, and we have to be prepared to change with these times. I always say to my team internally, um, and change is uncomfortable, but if you don't like change, I can guarantee you you're gonna like brand irrelevance even less. And so you have to be able to figure out how to continue to change and make bold moves. Um, but I want to leave you with that change doesn't have to be radical, um, as you heard from Victor. We're staying narrow in our lane, okay? He mentioned great coffee fast. So we, we did a study, and I know it sounds like consumer or marketing speak, but we decided to lean into beverages, being a beverage-led, on-the-go brand. We felt like that was our, our winning proposition. And so we built everything around that. And so recently when we launched Espresso, um, we knew nobody in this room is waking up every day wondering where they're gonna get a great latte, right? But where can you get a great Dunkin' latte at a fair price at the speed of Dunkin'? And we felt like that is our winning proposition. And everything we're doing right now is built around that winning proposition. Great coffee fast. We went on this journey and we decided that the blueprint for growth was the way that we were gonna operationalize our, our journey. And it was the way we were gonna bring this to life. And so the blueprint for growth, we've been very deliberate. It's a five-year plan built on intentional, deliberate sequencing. And so last year as an example, and look, um, we've been very confident that the moves we're making are the right moves. So last year in Q1, we simplified our menu. We needed to go in. There were some things that we were doing that were off strategy and we wanted to make sure that we got in and uh, simplified things, took things out of the restaurants. It was a big risk. The franchisees went along and they agreed that this was the right thing to do to lean into a beverage led on the go brand. Q2, we implemented a new value strategy. Q3, we got into uh, snacking and that day part. And Q4, we did the amazing, we relaunched Espresso, uh, the Duncan Wave. Op, the blueprint for growth was the way we did that. And what we're so proud about here in uh, Quincy was we opened up in 2018 the Next Gen Restaurant. And that's really where our blueprint comes to life. And it was so, um, I remember the mayor was out there and uh, Victor and, and Octavio opened this up and it was, um, it's, it's where everything that we were working on in the blueprint really spoke to the consumer and what we were leading into as a brand. So when you walk into this new next generation restaurant, you see these front forward bakery cases light up. You see these tap systems that we have in place. We like to think of ourselves more as coffee bartenders than snobby baristas. Uh, we saw the new, you know, my kids, uh, if you look at, uh, I'll always want to be somebody who goes to the front counter. 
But my kids, they don't want to talk to anybody. So we needed to make sure that the restaurant spoke to people who wanted to use this any way, anyhow, however they wanted to access us. Mobile order and pay became critical. We broke down some of those barriers that you see, the stainless steel that kind of hides the crew people. We broke that down. We wanted to romance what we were doing behind the counter. All of that, open all of that up uh, to the consumer and show that we do great coffee fast. It was a bold move. It's a bold move by our franchisees and what we're doing today. But it's really about change. It's about leaning into the future and leaning into trends. Look, as I, I'll say, as I look ahead and we look at uh, challenges in our business, you know, I think the one thing that we often talk about is, is your brand staying relevant? Is your brand staying modern? Is it leaning into trends? And I was previously, when, before I came up here, I was talking to uh, somebody here and they said, hey, how do you do this without upsetting your core users? And I think when we launched our new branding, you know, we've been America runs on Duncan for nearly two decades. And what we wanted to make sure that we did was, we wanted to make sure that we stayed true to our core, not upset our loyalists, give, pay homage to uh, the people that have been with us the longest, with also making sure that we give a nod to the future. And so everything that we do today is really about brand relevance. And making sure that your brand stays contemporary, stays leading edge, <coughs> leads into future trends. One of those trends that we're looking at right now is super convenience. Again, great coffee fast. We're built on speed. We know that's our competitive advantage. But we want to be a brand that consumers can use us anytime, anywhere. You'll find us in the grocery store. We're almost in every aisle within the grocery. Our app, we think, is one of the most leading edge apps in the industry. We're going to continue to make investments in that going forward. And like I said, uh, delivery, we've got a great relationship with DoorDash. We're working on a, um, um, an alpha test with Grubhub. These are all things to make sure that your brand stays relevant uh, and, and modern in the, in the space. <coughs>